Thank you very much indeed. We are here today in this uh, fantastic Edinburgh International Climbing Arena to launch the Scottish National Party 2015 General Election Manifesto. A manifesto which was put together after consultation with more than 200 external organisations and where we offered our then 97,000 members each the opportunity to have an input. We think we've delivered a package in this manifesto which not only will deliver the strongest voice for Scotland but which will see a real end to austerity. So to introduce... So to introduce it to you, uh, can I please welcome to the stage the leader of the Scottish National Party and Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. I am very proud to publish this SNP manifesto for the general election on May the 7th. This is a manifesto to make Scotland stronger at Westminster. The pledge I make today to the Scottish people is this. If you vote SNP on May the 7th, we will make your voice heard more loudly than it has ever been heard before at Westminster. We will stand up for Scotland's interests and we will always fight your corner. Our job is to serve you and we will do it at Westminster just as we do in the Scottish Parliament to the very best of our ability. That is my promise to Scotland. But I also want to make a pledge today to people in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Even though you can't vote SNP, your views do matter to me and you have a right to know what to expect of my party if the votes of the Scottish people give us influence in a hung parliament. So my promise to you is this. If the SNP emerges from this election in a position of influence, we will exercise that influence responsibly and constructively and we will always seek to exercise it in the interests of people, not just in Scotland, but across the whole of the UK. For as long as Scotland remains part of the Westminster system, we have a shared interest with you in making that system work better for all of us, in making it work for the many, not the few. We will not do any deals that would put the Tories into power. Yeah. 
Indeed, if there is an anti-Tory majority after May the 7th, we will vote to stop a new Tory government even getting off the ground. But we will then seek to use our influence positively and constructively to make a Labour government bolder and better. We will seek to make common cause and build alliances with others of like mind across the UK to deliver the progressive change that so many want to see. And we will bring to that task eight years' experience of government, of successful, effective and stable government. It was, after all, as a minority government in Scotland that the SNP restored free education, abolished prescription charges and froze the council tax. We will use that experience in a minority-led House of Commons to advance progressive policies that will benefit people in all parts of the UK. So to everyone who, like me, wants this election to herald the real and positive change that will make life better for ordinary people across these islands, I hold out a hand of friendship. The SNP, if we are given the chance, will be your allies in making that change. The manifesto we published today sets out our priorities for progressive change. It is a manifesto above all else to end austerity. That will be our number one priority. I say loudly and clearly today that it is time to end the needless pain of Tory cuts. In the last five years, austerity has undermined our public services. It has lowered the living standards of working people. It has pushed more children into poverty and it has held back economic growth. It hasn't even succeeded on its own terms. Over the last parliament, the Chancellor missed all of his own fiscal targets. When a policy is failing, it is time to change that policy. That is why we are putting forward today a clear alternative to the further spending cuts proposed by both Labour and the Tories. We want to see modest spending increases by the equivalent of increasing departmental spending by half a percent above inflation in each year of the next Parliament. Under our proposal, the deficit and the national debt will still fall in each year, but a slightly slower path to eliminating the deficit completely will allow at least £140 billion extra to be invested in infrastructure and support for business, in protecting our vital public services and in policies that will help to lift people out of poverty. We will also back fair proposals to raise extra revenue. It's right that those with the broadest shoulders pay a little bit more. That's why we will back the restoration of the 50 pence tax rate for the highest earners, a mansion tax and a banker's bonus tax. And when money is so tight, we believe it to be all the more important that we use our voice and our votes to make sure that we do not squander scarce resources on new nuclear weapons. seek to build an alliance in the House of Commons 
against the renewal of Trident and we will vote for the £100 billion that would be saved to be invested instead in education, better childcare and the National Health Service. That's how we will spend that money. Our plans for modest spending increases, fair taxes and setting the right priorities for spending will mean that we can invest in growing our economy and strengthening our society. It will mean that we can give the NHS the funding that it needs. Over the past week, Labour has failed to commit to the money England's NHS